Hi, I'm Brett Winton, Chief Futurist at ARK Invest, and I'm here to talk about technological convergence. So what is technological convergence? The convergence of technologies is when one technology encounters another technology and causes it to accelerate. Right now, we're experiencing an unprecedented amount of technological convergence because there are five major innovation platforms entering the economic marketplace and hitting critical stages of inflection at the same time. Public blockchains, artificial intelligence, multiomic sequencing, energy storage, and robotics. Each of these technology platforms on its own would be enough, in our view, to prompt a major capital market cycle. That they're all happening at once is not a coincidence. It's because AI is accelerating, and it's pulling all of the other technologies along with it. In fact, we think that this convergent stacking of five technologies is unprecedented in technological economic history. To find any comparable period, you have to go back 120 years, in fact, a little more, when electrification, the telephone, and the internal combustion engine were all entering the marketplace at the same time. In this chart, we've actually used uh, chat GPT, or GPT-4, to construct the history of technologies and of what are called general purpose technology platforms. Uh, and, and recreate the economic impact of different technologies over time. And you can see, with our expectations for the economic impact of these five major technology platforms, the technological foment that we're experiencing today is um, multiples more than was experienced even um, in the early 1900s when the, those three platforms were hitting the marketplace. So it's no surprise that people can feel palpably that technology is changing things. It's because it is in a way that's never happened before. In fact, we're so focused on how technologies catalyze each other, we do what we call convergence scoring, where we look at the intersection of the different technologies that we focus on and measure how much is one technology dependent upon an advance in the other. This chart captures what we call the convergence matrix. It's really a measure of how much does um, artificial intelligence impact uh, energy storage and robo-taxis? And how much does um, do public blockchains and smart contracts uh, impact even multiomics? Uh, we believe that, that uh, digital wallets will become an important repository for healthcare data, for example. Um, and as you can see in the chart, the Central purple square is um, the, the various technologies that we focus on in artificial intelligence, neural nets, next-gen cloud, and intelligent devices, and how they're reinforcing each other. Uh, the advances in neural nets are making intelligent devices become more provocative, more performative for end users, and driving demand and engagement across you know, smartphones, smartwatches, and you know, maybe even headsets in the future. Uh, and you can see in the strong vertical stripe, uh, purple stripe there in the center, how artificial intelligence technologies are catalyzing the other technologies as well. In fact, if you aggregate the scoring, artificial intelligence is the most important um, technology platform for all of the other technologies. So if I had to choose one technology to happen faster uh, than I had anticipated, it would be AI. And you may have noticed AI is moving pretty quickly. So as you can see in this chart, actually it's moving remarkably quicker, quickly, quicker than anything I've ever studied in my career. In 2020, this chart captures forecasters' expectations for when an artificial general intelligence system will become available and demonstrated for the general public. So what's an artificial general intelligence system? Well, in this case, there's a very specifically defined criteria where it's a system that has to be able to put together a very complicated car model if given the right robotic actuators. You can think of this as kind of like the IKEA test. So could I take this system and could it successfully put together that piece of IKEA furniture that I just bungled? Uh, it has to be able to um, win an adversarial two-hour conversation with a human, convincing that human that it's 
not AI, but is instead another hum human. So be able to exchange audio, video, images for two hours, where this interviewer is really trying to trip it up and demonstrate that it's not human, and it has to win. Uh, and it has to surpass um, a series of um, kind of logical fact-based tests of the sort that you need to pass, for instance, if you're going to um, be qualified as a, as a doctor in the US or be qualified as a lawyer uh, in, in, in the US. Uh, and so across a number of specialty areas, it has to score above 90th percentile you know, on logical reasoning. Um, so it's a hard barrier to cross. And you know, no surprise, in 2020, people thought that was 80 years away. It seemed so unfathom unfathomable that uh, an artificial intelligence system could do these things. With the launch of ChatGPT and uh, advances by DeepMind inside Google, and in particular GPT-4, that time to realization is compressed. Now forecasters think it's eight years away. And if they keep being wrong about how far away it is, it could be as, as little as four years away. Uh, and so by the end of this decade, it's likely that an artificial general intelligence system will be available. Uh, and so AI will accelerate, and it will accelerate all of the other technologies that we focus on along with it. Uh, Here's a, a, a simple example of how technologies converge. Uh, so neural nets impact autonomous mobility. Uh, the fact that Tesla is implicitly betting that neural nets will allow the vehicles it's selling today to serve as robo-taxis in the future. Waymo, Google subsidiary, has already demonstrated, or Alphabet subsidiary, has already demonstrated that robo-taxis can work and uh, operate commercially, but it does so on a vehicle that costs around $180,000. Well, Tesla's costs around $35,000 to produce, uh, and it has many, many fewer sensors. Uh, and the, the bet that Tesla is making is advances in neural nets will allow us to deliver the same commercial robo-taxi type experience that Waymo is delivering on a much less expensive vehicle. Uh, then you combine it with advances in energy storage. If you had to run a robo-taxi on an internal combustion engine, uh, it would cost uh, 31 cents in operating cost per mile versus 12 cents on an electric drivetrain. So the advances in battery technology are critical to economically delivering a robo-taxi to end users. It's almost a, a two-thirds reduction in, in the marginal cost per mile for a robo-taxi, exclusive of the upfront cost. Uh, and so you combine energy storage and neural nets, and you get autonomous mobility. Advances in autonomous mobility further contribute to the possibility in humanoid robots. So uh, autonomous mobility systems uh, will drive down the cost of the batteries that are inside them. They will also improve the power electronics and actuators that you need for nimble, um, power-efficient robots. Uh, so that's an example. And there are plenty of examples of how different technologies are intersecting to accelerate the rate pace at which technology is um, penetrating the marketplace. Uh, and these technologies are going to have profound macroeconomic impacts. In fact, if you look at our expectations for AI, autonomous mobility, and adaptive robotics, each of those independently would qualify as one of the most, if not the most, macroeconomically important technological innovation of all time, comparable in, in the case of AI, even exceeding the steam engine in terms of its annual um, impact on macroeconomic growth. At a high level, we think that um, the compounded annual real growth rate of, the, of GDP over the course of the decade will exceed 7%. Uh, and so there's going to be, in our view, a step change in the rate of macroeconomic growth driven by these technologies. And markets are likely to follow the macros. So, Whereas today, across disruptive technology, we think there's around $19 trillion in attributed market cap. Over the course of the decade, we think that's going to grow to $220 trillion, more than 60% of equity market capitalization. And I'm lumping public blockchains like Bitcoin in 
with equity markets here uh, will be attributable, uh, attributable to disruptive technology. I guess the question you have to ask yourself is, am I innovation exposed enough? Because here we're assuming that the rest of the market continues to grow, not in a robust way, but you know, 3% per year. And it could be that we're wrong about that because a lot of those core fixed asset incumbent companies have, are exposed to disruption from these technologies. Uh, and so you know, we think EV autonomous trucks, for example, will be cost competitive with freight rail. So those freight rail assets could be put in distress. Uh, in case we happen to be right about the innovation appreciation that we expect over the course of the decade, uh, it's important that you're not unintentionally short that innovation by holding disrupted companies in your core portfolios. So that's technological convergence. Thanks for listening.